consider myself very fortunate indeed uh, to be able to participate in this uh, very important though informal uh, forum uh, to uh, celebrate our great uh, intellectual father, our great uh, uh, intellectual guide, and uh, we look forward to uh, more wisdom from him, inshallah, uh, in the coming years. Uh, let me just, um, uh, first of all, take you back into history, because uh, when I first met uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid uh, in USA, uh, I never thought that I would be later on working with him and under him for about 10 years uh, in uh, in a university that we, we never thought at that time. Uh, so, but let me just take you back to 1966 when I first came to uh, Columbia University. I was in MSA of Columbia and I would attend the MSA convention every year. And the first person who introduced me to the MSA uh, in USA was uh, Dr. Ahmad Tatonji. And it was also he who um, who uh, told me later on at MSA conventions about one, uh, uh, you might say, uh, 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 a new um, intellectual in the making, a new ummatic and intellectual in the making, uh, the young uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman, who had uh, just finished his uh, PhD at Pennsylvania uh, with his thesis on the uh, new theory of international relations in Islam. So um, it was in 1970, and I attended the annual convention of MSA uh, for uh, on the East Coast. It was a um, uh, very cold winter with about two, three meters of snow around. And uh, this was my first time going to MS MSA convention in 1970. And, uh, uh, we were told that uh, one uh, young Saudi scholar would be also speaking. And uh, so that's how I uh, came to know about Dr. Abdul Hamid. He gave a talk on, the, on some of the Islamic economic concepts uh, and based on the, on the Quran and the Sunnah and his, inter his rationalistic interpretation of some of these, uh, you know, the uh, norms and values about finance and, and economic, I thought he was a, an economist, but actually he was trained as a political scientist and also international relations uh, expert. Uh, but uh, it was very clear that here you have somebody that was in 1970 when he spoke at the convention, that he was critical of uh, some of the traditional uh, scholars' uh, ways of, of, of analyzing uh, social, economic, and political problems. Uh, and I think uh, he, he came to the conclusion that a part of the problem was the methodology, the fiqhi methodology, uh, which uh, sort of uh, would interpret uh, social, economic, uh, cultural things from, from a legalistic perspective, from a fiqhi perspective. And that was one of the main reasons which I think that led uh, he and people like him later on to, to really work on the um, uh, intellectual reform or intellectual transformation of the Ummah. Okay, so um, then the, in 1972, uh, while I was uh, working on my PhD thesis, um, um, uh, uh, the AMSS was formed, American Muslim uh, Association of Muslim Social Scientists were formed in 1972. And that was a time when uh, Dr. Uh, Ismail uh, uh, Al-Farouqi was the president and, and, and he introduced the idea of the need for reform of, of education and also Islamization of, of the secularized uh, Western social sciences and also humanities. And, and to a certain extent, also the natural sciences, but they were more, they were focusing more on the social sciences. And I was very interested uh, in, in that, in the area of a critique of the Western uh, social sciences uh, actually being a, a continuation of the colonial project and also neo-colonialism. So um, I, I met uh, Dr. Amda Hamid uh, in this uh, AMSS uh, conventions uh, and so on. But as I said, I never thought that I would be working with him uh, for many years in Malaysia. 
So I consider myself really very, very fortunate uh, to have worked under him, to be guided by him, to be uh, to learn from his uh, great patience and wisdom. But one thing that that I must say that um, what I learned from him was the uh, the need to change the uh, nationalistic mindset to the omatic mindset. Uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid was a thorough a thoroughbred omatic uh, intellectual. There was not a tinge of uh, nationalism in him. He never talked about, you know, <laughs> the pride of being a nationalist and, and so on. And I think that was very, very important for us uh, in, 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 in Malaysia, especially building the university, because this was the first international university, but built in Malaysia, owned by the Muslim Ummah and not by Malaysia. Malaysia is one of the owners of the university, but the aim was to uh, to revitalize, to reform, to transform the Ummah, because uh, he and his group later on in Triple IT, led by uh, Prof. Ismail Farooqi, uh, saw the uh, one of the uh, reasons for the malaise of the Ummah was uh, the, uh, the intellectual deficit and intellectual problems within the Ummah. And, and, uh, and IIUM uh, became one of the uh, instruments to solve uh, this uh, intellectual deficit of the Muslim Ummah. The, uh, the dichotomy between the secular and the religious had to be, uh, had to be eliminated. And IIUM uh, was meant to do that, to remove this dichotomy and to also uh, de-secularize higher education, uh, which was still uh, very much a part of the culture of higher education in Malaysia as we inherited the British uh, system and then later on adopted the American system. So we are not out of the woods yet. But IIUM was out of the woods um, since Dr. Abdul Hamid came because um, first he, he, he changed the system uh, from the uh, English oriented system to the, you might, you might say American in a way, but it's not bringing, it's not Americanization of IIUM, but actually he changed uh, the, 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 the British term system into the American semester system with the uh, full credit hour system, uh, double major, uh, major minor, and all that, which I, I thought was really uh, transformative. And it has produced very good results uh, in, in IAUM and, and our alumni all over the world benefited from the educational transformations that Dr. Abdul Hamid brought. So Dr. Abdul Hamid, uh, to my mind, uh, uh, was and is the real builder of the university. He was also the architect of the university. And here I'm using the word architect literally and also metaphorically. Literally because when um, uh, when uh, the government decided to uh, to start planning on the uh, Gombak campus as a permanent campus. He spent most of his time on the planning uh, for this campus for about two, three years, working day and night with uh, two prominent Arab um, architects. One uh, was called uh, Rasim Badran and the other one, Dr. Abdul Halim from Egypt, Rasim Badran from Jordan with uh, um, Haji Hamza, who is still alive, uh, he's about 80, 89 now, uh, and uh, Prof. Uh, Ismawi Zain, as, as uh, you know, they were teamed together, but it was Dr. Abdul Hamid, who was not an architect uh, professionally, but he was the one giving the vision. He wanted it this way, making the, the, the design of the campus with the mosque in the center, which represented the, 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 uh, the core value of religion being at the center of an educational institution with a spiritual center uh, and then surrounded by the intellectual, the physical, the aesthetic, uh, and the academic and so on. So that was um, uh, his major contribution. Uh, what many people did not know was that he also designed the, uh, the room for the uh, students hostel or the mahallats. Uh, the four in a room was Dr. Abdul Hamid's uh, design, and I think he should have taken, you know, um, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, special uh, intellectual property right 
for that <laughs> because uh, he arrived at this four in a room after a long analysis of what what would happen with one two three okay but um, that is as far as the physical planning was concerned but his greatest to my mind his greatest contribution was not just the physical uh, design but the intellectual reconstruction of the of the students and the staff in IAUM now he was able to uh, to, to bring this about because of his innovation, because of his courage, because of his creativity. Uh, and of course, he was also fortunate because the prime minister at that time, Dr. Mahade, was uh, supportive and the deputy prime minister was also very, very, very helpful. Uh, and the finance minister was also supportive. So he had the, the, the political and financial support uh, for a long time until the crisis came and that led to force him to leave uh, his beloved university, and he told me uh, the work is not finished, but he had to leave because of, of uh, unfavorable political circumstances. Uh, so um, I consider Dr. Abdul Hamid uh, as, the, as the real builder because of this uh, special uh, system that he, he, he brought in, and we benefited from it. And later on, other public universities uh, uh, followed the semester system. Uh, he started the four-year system. In Malaysia, it was three years, and now Malaysia going four and then coming back to three, you know, and, and so on. But we are still maintaining that because we have produced, we have the evidences to show that uh, the Abdul Hamid system produced very good results, uh, intellectually, physically, and so on. Another thing that many of you don't know, that he was very concerned with the Malay culture, uh, not, the, uh, not the negative uh, part of it, but uh, the being shy, uh, especially the girls don't want to speak in public. Um, and, um, and so he was very concerned about, he knew about this because he used to come to Malaysia uh, after 75, he used to come uh, to, to be a speaker at Abim, uh, Muqtamar Abim and so on. And he would see the girls would be at the back and they don't speak, although they knew English, they wouldn't speak, they would just send love letters, you know, they would write the, the questions and then they would pass it on. And uh, so Dr. Abdul Hamid wanted to put an end to this, what you, you the, this, this misplaced modesty of, of, of the Malays or of the Malay girls in particular. And I think that was one of the reasons why he, he, he brought, he managed to also bring uh, uh, Amina Wadud uh, to, to, to the university. Uh, because uh, he thought that uh, Amina, with her uh, openness, frankness, uh, willingness to speak and so on, would help to uh, ignite uh, the, the latent, um, um, you know, um, uh, emotion, uh, intellectual quotient of the Malay girls. Uh, and so um, what he did was he, he started the debating uh, institution in IUM. And true enough, that changed uh, the many of the girls and Malays who, who became members of the debating team. And for those of you who, who may not know, and I, I'm seeing Dr. Louis, uh, uh, Louis Safi now, uh, our debating team uh, in, in English and, and later on in Arabic became the best, among the best in the world, the top 10 debating teams in the world. And we used to beat Harvard uh, and, and Yale uh, and so on. And some people didn't believe it, and we have evidences to show that. And also in our moot court, which uh, uh, has been held every year in Washington, uh, one of our girls came out uh, as, as the best speaker. And we were uh, number five in, in the ranking. So uh, the, the debating institution changed the, uh, the shyness, uh, the, um, uh, the, the reservedness of, of Malay girls not to speak in public. And now our girls are among the most outspoken and, uh, uh, and, and they're doing very well in the professions. And, and, and we had also a woman, uh, a woman rector for the first time in the Muslim history, I guess, a woman rector. And she was, you know, again, also sent by Dr. Abdul Hamid to go to England. Yeah, she, he told uh, Prof. Zaliha, you have to go to England to do your PhD. Uh, and she came back and later on became the rector, alhamdulillah. So there are so many uh, transformations that he brought about. But in this short period, I will not be able to address it. I hope I will be able to write it later on uh, for the Feshrif, inshallah.
uh, but um, um, uh, the um, another another contribution of his was uh, uh, the Islamization of knowledge. Of course, uh, Doctor uh, Ismail Al Faruqi was the one. Who, who started it, but they in triple IT saw the Islamization of human knowledge, especially in the social sciences and humanities, uh, were a necessity to de-Westernize, de-secularize, um, and also decolonize, uh, de-imperialize um, uh, the, uh, the social sciences and the humanities. And IIUM became the the intellectual instrument uh, to bring this about. And that's why Islamization has become part of our uh, mission of the university. Um, and uh, uh, Tansuri Zul has been going back to this uh, uh, seven missions of, of the university, which include Islamization and so on. And, and this uh, seven mission statement were, were finalized when Dr. Abdul Hamid was the rector. Um, then um, another thing that um, uh, I must uh, mention is um, the um, uh, the uh, reform of of the Muslim intellectuals uh, by introducing this integration of the social sciences, uh, humanities, and, and religious sciences. He was very concerned, like like uh, Abdul, uh, like Ismail Al Faruqi, about this uh, uh, the rift between the the religious intellectuals and the secular intellectuals. IIUM was to was meant to bring them together, to be integrated, uh, and he's he uh, managed to do this, uh, but unfortunately, after he left, somehow uh, this was not well addressed. Uh, I'm also partly to blame for that, and I think uh, we do have some problems of. Uh, of lack of integration between the social scientists and the religious scholars, although we are in one uh, one one uh, uh, faculty. Uh, so again, uh, Prof. Zul, uh, the Kulia of Islamic Review Knowledge and Human Sciences was his brainchild. Was Dr. Abdul Hamid? He wanted to bring the religious uh, scholars and the uh, the secular social scientists and humanities together. To, to, to work together under one roof. And then he introduced the, the idea of double major. For any student who is majoring in the social sciences, he or she must minor, uh, or they can also major, must minor in reveal knowledge. And those uh, students of reveal knowledge uh, must minor in a social science uh, discipline. So our students, uh, emerge as really integrated. And we have now many examples uh, of uh, students coming from the Arabic schools, but studied uh, majoring in psychology and emerged as an expert in psychology with, with a religious madrasa background. Uh, we have uh, several now in the university. And also uh, some of the religious students became social scientists. Uh, became a political scientist. So we have produced that, but somehow rather because the father is not around, I think ch children tend to forget uh, the, the mission of the father and started going different ways. But also after him, there were a lot of pressures from the ministry, uh, partly because of the political crisis, partly because of, I cannot go into depth uh, you know, on this uh, now, but, uh, <laughs> but because of the political crisis, the ministry began to impose uh, its uh, uh, you know, directives and uh, policies upon us. Uh, three, uh, four years must be uh, cut into three. Uh, we used to have 150 credit hours. No, you have to have only 120 and all that. Uh, and Dr. Abdul Hamid was no, long, no longer around to fight. So I, I surrendered from the very beginning uh, to the ministry and, uh, and, and we had to just uh, follow. But Alhamdulillah, Tansri Zul, uh, he's a fighter, he's a, uh, so he always puts up a good stand. And Alhamdulillah, I think people in the ministry are beginning to see uh, that uh, we need not be uh, following uh, everything coming out from, uh, from, uh, from the West or from the East. We should have our own way. Uh, the other thing is that uh, Dr. Abdul Hamid was also a murabbi uh, and a murshid. Uh, Yes, he was known to be an intellectual leader par excellence, 
but I think like his guru, Ismail al faruqi or his friend, Ismail al faruqi who was very close to students. Uh, al faruqi was, you might say, I think he is the uh, um, intellectual par excellence uh, without any peer in his time uh, until I think Abu Wahab al-Masiri came and, and left. Uh, but um, but, but, but uh, Ismail al faruqi was not uh, an armchair scholar like me. He was very close to the students. He would uh, look into the students' welfare, and Abdul Hamid is, is even much more. And Abdul Hamid would even give his own money. Uh, if he found any students hungry, not eating, then he will look into his own pocket and give the money. And he did not take any allowances while he was working for 10 years in the university. So what the university did, what, what that, that Zailan did, okay, uh, since you do not want to take the allow traveling allowances or whatever allowances due to you, then we will collect this and put it under Abdul Hamid, uh, Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman uh, Students Fund, which is still uh, alive today, Alhamdulillah. Um, all right, I guess um, that's about it. I want to say, for as for his works, I must say this though, because he is an intellectual transformer. So he is also an intellectual transformer, not just architect, not just a builder, not just a murabi or murshid, uh, uh, but also uh, the, the scholar. Uh, and you can see, for instance, um, after he left, uh, he came out with a very good book, uh, The Worldview of the Quran as uh, the springboard for cultural reform which were, I thought it was a wonderful book translated uh, uh, from Arabic into English. Uh, because when he was in IIUM, he did not talk much about worldview uh, orientation. But after that, I think Triple IT uh, began to talk about worldview of the Quran uh, as, as a basis for transformation. Uh, of course, his, uh, you might say his, uh, in a way his magnum opus, was the uh, the crisis in the Muslim mind? See, uh, not crisis of the Muslim mind, but crisis in the Muslim mind, <laughs> and and all the uh, scholars in Triple IT were actually blaming the Muslim intellectuals. They were not blaming the West principally. They were concerned about the secularization of the West. But uh, there are many things that they, we could learn from the West. But they were mainly blaming uh, the Muslim. Uh, scholarship and Muslim scholars with their uh, faulty uh, or um, uh, methodologies. One and, minute uh, left, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'm coming to the end now. So I just want to mention that uh, we uh, we need to uh, examine his his uh, scholarly thoughts in his books and writings, which I'm not addressing now. Uh, that will be a separate topic altogether. It will take me away from from this because I just want to show how much I benefited from working under him and how much the university benefited, how much the Malaysia Malaysia owed uh, to the uh, transformation ideas of of uh, of Dr. Abdul Hamid Abu Sulaiman and also uh, IIUM. One last thing uh, I wanted to tell everybody here is um, he worked. He was a workaholic. He worked uh, like like his teacher from from uh, salat, after Salatul Fajr uh, until uh, uh, until late at night after Aisha, and he used to work uh, with us um, uh, at the university, having meetings late into the night. Um, and one last point: uh, uh, there was a, a time when when uh, all this work, uh, rushing here and there, nonstop, never took any holidays. Um, uh, uh, worked against his, he used to have a, uh, a chronic back pain and that chronic back pain uh, was really uh, killing him. And there was a time when I came into the, his room and I saw him lying flat on the floor, horizontal on the, on the floor. And he was dictating to, uh, uh, to his uh, secretary. Uh, so he was managing the university. Uh, Tansri Zul, please don't do this. Huh? Uh, we want you to stand up, the, running the university, standing up, walking, no problem, but don't be flat on the floor because his, his back uh, could not take it anymore. Uh, and he would not listen to the doctors. He would still be in the office, flat on the floor, directing here and directing there, blah, blah, blah. Fortunately, uh, he, he did not have, uh, you know, the, 
the, the handphone that we have today. At thank that time, you, so uh, much, you know. Sir. Okay, so I think that's about it. I want to say thank you very much, uh, Dr. Misawi, for giving me the time. I uh, hope and pray that Dr. Abdul Hamid, uh, Allah will grant him long life so that we can benefit more from him. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.